I want to talk to you about what's going on in Parliament. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you have the documents, the SDTC documents. Um, have you opened them? I, uh, so I'll just say that, and I, I share this with a colleague when he was there when I came out of Piffy, uh, we're investigating, okay? And uh, there is, uh, it's, it's been uh, unusual circumstances in which members of, of, of parliament use their parliamentary privilege to obtain the information to give it to us. We, we are investigating. Uh, that will become part of the investigation, but we have to be mindful that as, as a law enforcement, everything we be, bring forward in the judicial process that we have, we must have obtained it legally. So that's what we're working to, the investigation is ongoing, and the day that we reach the conclusion that we are either laying charges or we're not, we'd be more than happy to share it with Canadians. Can you s just clarify though, are the, have the RCMP opened these documents? Like, have they, I mean, there was so much talk about sending them to, has the RCMP actually ha opened them? I'll leave it, Stephanie, to the, the investigations continue right now. What was the issue with the process? In which, I mean, you wrote a letter in July outlining some of the issues, but can you just explain what is the issue from the RCMP's perspective of the way um, these documents ended up being being obtained and, and sent? Well, it's uh, first of all, it's a little unusual how they were obtained. Second of all, uh, there may be some documents that are shared with us that we would have no judicial, judicial author, uh, author, authority to get them, mean, no means to obtain a search warrant in order to get them. Uh, I am concerned with regards to privacy concerns. I am concerned how these, how these documents were collected. Uh, are there any parliamentary privilege associated with some of these documents? So these are just some concerns because you could, you could, a, a government agency could collect information under their process based on these guidelines. But that doesn't mean that these guidelines fit right into criminal investigation. So there's a lot to entangle there. Uh, our team is reviewing all the information that we have and uh, the investigation is ongoing. Is it, is it a question though as to whether you'd be able to use them in the context of a criminal investigation? Well, that's, that's to my point earlier is we have to make sure that when we, lead, when we have an investigation, every document that we, that, we, that we have to submit in a judicial procedure was collected within the parameters, within the legal parameters in which we can operate them. You mentioned uh, that it was unusual. What's wrong with unusual? There's nothing wrong with unusual, except with this one here, it's, 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 it's interesting because you have the legislative branch and the executive branch, where the legislative branch is actually helping the executive branch get the information at least for the investigation. So that's a little unusual. Uh, so uh, again, like I said, we're investigating, and as we get to the end of it, we'll be more than happy to share the conclusion of the, re of, uh, of the investigation being if we're laying charges or if we're not laying charges, the reason why we're not laying charges. Does this whole ordeal put the RCMP in a bit of an awkward situation? Uh, I'd like to think that people should uh, have uh, trust and faith in the organization. And uh, there's no leak, there's nothing legal to say that I can't take that. There's nothing legal to say that I have to use it as well. So we're in this gray zone where it's never happened in the past. And uh, like I said, I have brilliant people on the investigation team that are looking through the information and we'll see where it leads.